A bill that would extend or end Montana statute of limitations on child sexual abuse is now up in the air and the legislature only has eight days to get the bill passed through committee to the House. MTN's Andrea Lutz has more. While Jim Jensen is being criminally charged federally for internet crime, some 31 plaintiffs in a massive civil case may never be given that justice. They hoped for a change in law during Montana's 2019 legislature. It's an epidemic right now in Montana, and it's like the, uh, you know, Rome's burning and the legislators are slow walking this. House Bill 202, sponsored by Democrat Shane Morjo, initially had widespread bipartisan support aimed at extending or ending the civil statute of limitations law altogether. My perspective all along has been, um, if someone has been sexually abused as a child, you should never be able to escape the justice system. But plaintiffs in Jensen's sex abuse case say then came Billings Representative Bill Mercer. I think the Morjo bill is not good public policy and I'm trying to work with both people on judiciary and outside of judiciary to see if we can come up with a different approach. Survivors of the abuse say sexual massages and rub downs occurred under the direction of Jensen to enhance athletic ability. All of our clients are being deposed. They're all being asked intimate and personal details. It's, it re-traumatizes victims and that's the current state of the law. However, Mercer says it should stay that way and instead focus on Montana's criminal statute of limitation laws. And so we're busy trying to work through those issues and figure out, you know, what should we do with the statute of limitations on the civil side and the criminal side. In Billings, Andrea Lutz, MTN News. And Andrea tells us Representative Bill Mercer does not serve on the House Judiciary Committee where this bill was introduced and is being heard. A bill to abolish Montana's death penalty died in committee on Wednesday. Republicans on the House Judiciary Committee voted to table or kill the bill two days after the committee held a hearing on the measure. The bill went down on an 11 to 8 vote with all Democrats voting to keep it alive. House Bill 350, sponsored by Republican State Representative Mike Hopkins of Missoula, would have abolished the death penalty and replaced it with a life sentence in prison. Hopkins told MTN News he had no plans to try to revive the measure. He said it was important to have the discussion about the cost of maintaining the death penalty, even though Montana is currently barred by a court ruling from executing anyone. Two people currently sit on Montana's death row, including one who was sentenced nearly 36 years ago. And meanwhile, a bill paving the way for the state to become an investment partner in large economic development efforts, such as the One Big Sky project in Billings, is taking shape but has not yet been formally introduced. Billings Senator Roger Webb, the chief sponsor, says what started as a six-page bill draft is now 42 pages long and it's not done yet. Webb told us this week five Montana communities have expressed an interest in the bill that requires $300 million in private investment to trigger an infusion of $125 million in state dollars. Webb stresses his bill is still a work in progress, but it has the potential to spark billions of dollars in economic development for the state. It has the potential, it has the capability of generating billions of dollars. I mean, can you imagine five of these projects going at once? That's potentially $5 billion. And our state budget's only 10. But this has a 20, 30, 40 year impact that nothing else has. In addition to Billings, the other communities that have projects that could benefit from Webb's bill include Bozeman, Missoula, Big Sky, and Polson. Since the One Big Sky bill is considered a revenue measure, it needs to be formally introduced by the 60th legislative day, which gives Webb slightly more than three weeks to work out the details. Also happening in Helena, representatives from Montana's resort communities asked the legislature Wednesday to let them increase the resort tax to pay for infrastructure needs. It's a tax of up to 3% on things like hotels, restaurants, and gifts. Now resort communities are asking for the option to add an additional 1% tax specifically to pay for infrastructure. Senate Bill 241, sponsored by Republican Senator Jeff Wellborn of Dillon, would let voters in those communities decide whether to add the additional amount. Leaders of those resort communities say it's a challenge to pay for the impacts they see from an annual influx of tourists.
Montana lawmakers are hard at work on the first draft of the state's two-year budget. On Wednesday, a nine-member panel wrapped up its initial work on the biggest portion, Health and Human Services. Health and Human Services accounts for 40 percent of the state's overall budget. That's more than $4 billion over the next two years. On Wednesday, the House Senate subcommittee crafting this budget approved a slight increase and restored some of the cuts made during the past year. Perhaps the most significant change is more money for nursing homes, assistance living centers and other private providers that take care of the elderly, the mentally ill and the disabled. Most of the votes Wednesday were bipartisan with Democrats and Republicans on the nine member committee voting together. Lawmakers still must figure out where they'll get the money to cover the state's share of the Children's Health Insurance Plan after a big drop in federal funding. Democrat Mary Cafaro of Helena said there simply isn't enough money to cover what she considers vital services and that lawmakers should seriously consider Target, targeted tax increases to raise those funds. There are many programs that have been cut and eliminated and people don't even realize it. I think that people who are advocates for human services and their lobbyists really could do a good service for the people we represent by going to the tax committee mm -hmm. and helping members of the tax committee understand what those taxes pay for. So far this session, majority Republicans have said they do not plan to support any tax increases. The next stop for the budget is the full House Appropriations Committee next month. And a bill that has already passed out of committee, House Bill 392, would give the state of Montana an official rock and roll song. That song, the Hippie Hippie Shake, was famously recorded by the Beatles, but was originally written and recorded by Billings native Chan Romero in 1959. Lon Fott, whose late father Larry operated the Billings studio where Romero first recorded the song, brought in the original reel-to-reel -reel demo for lawmakers to take a listen. It's a piece of Montana history. Um, you know, my dad is a Montana native. He uh, grew up in Lodgegrass and then moved to Billings when he was 18 where he spent his entire life. We're trying to, you know, carry on my dad's legacy. House Bill 392 must fully pass the House and Senate before it would make its way to the governor's desk. Now on to a sad update this morning. The Montana firefighting community is mourning the loss of one of their own. Great Falls firefighter Jason Baker lost his two-year battle with cancer early Wednesday morning. This is video of Baker from a previous interview with MTN. The 45-year-old was diagnosed with stage 4 lung cancer in October of 2016. Jason used his illness as a platform to promote health and safety for firefighters across the state. He retired from Great Falls Fire Rescue at the end of last year. A broken leg meant a backcountry rescue for a Minnesota man who crashed his snowmobile near West Yellowstone. It happened Tuesday night in the Cabin Creek area, about 12 miles north of West Yellowstone. Search and rescue say the 44-year-old man crashed his snowmobile. Rescuers located him in a steep canyon. They managed to get him into a toboggan and haul him to a spot where a helicopter could land. He was then taken to Bozeman for treatment. The constant cold weather this month is evident in the amount of natural gas and electricity consumed to heat homes and businesses. Mark Hansen with Montana Dakota Utilities reports natural gas usage is 45 percent higher than average for eastern Montana in February. But over the first two months, it's up only 10 percent. That's because, and you might not remember it, it was warm in January. And as it turns out, we're currently sitting in the second coldest February on record with only four days reporting temperatures above freezing.